Peter the Apostle, and Paul, teacher of the Gentiles, these have taught us your law, O Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Today is the feast of Saints Peter and Paul, the Apostles. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord our God, that we may be sustained by the intercession of the best apostles Peter and Paul, that, as through them you gave your church the foundations of our heavenly office, so through them you may help her to eternal salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he put this question to his disciples. Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say he's John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But you, he said, who do you say I am? Then Simon Peter spoke up. You are the Christ, he said, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Simon, son of Jonah, you are a happy man, because it was not flesh and blood that revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. So I now say to you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the underworld can never hold out against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be considered bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be considered loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Such is their prominence in the Christian calendar, unlike the other apostles, Saints Peter and Saint Paul had a day all to themselves, and it is today, their feast day. In the Gospel that we've just heard, we see where Jesus made Peter head of the church. He and his successors were to be the focal point of unity and orthodoxy in the church throughout history, preserving it from error. 
A church without Peter is like a school without a head or a football match without a referee. Anything goes. The authority which Jesus conferred on Peter, despite his sins and failings, is now invested in the present successor of St. Peter, who is Pope Francis. The Pope may be fallible on matters of faith and morals, and that's the teaching of the Church, but he's not impeccable. However, today sometimes you get the impression that when it comes to issues of faith and moral, morals, everybody is infallible except the Pope. St. Paul's background was quite different from that. We not all know about his dramatic conversion, but before that he was a terror to the early church. Because of his record, he'd be the last person we'd have chosen for a missionary role. God's ways, however, are not our ways. Thank God for that. Because of a person's background or their history or their record or their sins, we must never write anyone off either. But sometimes we do and judge them wrongly. St. Paul is without doubt the great missionary. St. John, St. Paul VI used to say that the church exists in order to be missionary. I would say that sometimes in England and in Ireland we've settled more for a maintenance sort of church rather than mission, but things are changing, I believe. We need to be more missionary today to confront the growing secularization of our Western culture, especially in the part of the world we live in, which is Europe. Many people may be more leaving the EU, but we sure won't be any the worse for it as far as the Catholic faith is concerned. The Catholic Church may have contributed more than any other institution towards European civilization throughout the ages, but that's airbrushed out of the EU's present constitution. What a shame. Whatever we say about Saints Peter and Paul, they never try to hide their failures or struggles. St. Peter, if you remember, once asked our Lord to leave him because he was a sinful man, and that was after the miracle of the fishes. He wept bitterly after disowning Jesus in the early hours of Good Friday. He may have momentarily deserted Jesus through human weakness, but never malice. But Jesus knew there was more to Peter than that, because Peter would eventually lay down his life for the one he loved. Now St. Paul was even more candid than Peter. He said that he was merciless in persecuting the airy church, doing untold damage to it. He even said once, that he wasn't worthy even to be called an apostle. For instance, he entirely approved of the murder of Saint Stephen. Do you remember Saint Stephen, the first martyr? He was stoned to death. But such was Paul's conversion, like Saint Stephen, he too would lay down his life for his master, which would make up for all his sins even the sin of condoning murder. Despite their weaknesses, however, Saints Peter and Paul eventually proved their worth. They never left us in any doubt whatsoever that it was the grace of God and not their own strength that they became the men they were. Jesus said to Peter, 
at the Last Supper. Satan had the desire to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail, and then you will go on to strengthen your brothers and sisters in the faith. St. Paul said in one of his letters, I do all things by the power of the one who gives me strength. By the grace of God, not by my own strength, by the grace of God, I am what I am. Paul was beheaded and Peter crucified in Rome around 64 or 65 AD. Saints Peter and Saint Paul pray for us. Let us place our needs and the needs of the world before our Heavenly Father in prayer. Peter was the rock on which the Church is founded. Let us pray that his successor, Pope Francis, may continue to be a source and inspiration for those in the Church and indeed the world at large. Lord, hear us. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We bring offerings to your altar, O Lord, as we glory in the solemn feast of the blessed apostles Peter and Paul so that the more we doubt our own merits, the more we may rejoice that we are to be saved by your loving kindness. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by your providence, the blessed apostles Peter and Paul bring us joy. Peter, foremost in confessing the faith. Paul, its outstanding preacher. Peter, who established the early church from the remnant of Israel. Paul, master and teacher of the Gentiles that you call. And so, each in a different way, gathered together the one family of Christ, and revealed together throughout the world, they share one martyr's crown. And therefore, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held as worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Let us now pray to God our Father with confidence in the words which Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Spiritual communion prayer. I, Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to have you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as having already come, and I unite myself entirely to you. Never let me be separated from you. And the latest news on opening the churches is in on my website. The Lord. 